Hi there guys, Johnny Rose here and on behalf of myself and the Push Button Profits team I want to welcome you to our chat GPT for beginners tutorial. Now you are about to embark upon a 35 or so minute tutorial to introduce you to the fundamentals and basics of using chat GPT and you can just check it out and watch it, it's all here for you. If you want to skip ahead to any particular teachings or points, then there are timestamps in the description below so you can skip ahead. I know some of us don't really have time to just sit down and watch something systematically for 35 minutes. So do check out the description below for um for the you know the right timestamps. Something else I want you to be aware of is my team and I have put together what we believe is the best and biggest free chat GPT training available on the internet right now. Lots of people are gonna try and sell you chat GPT courses. You don't need to be handing over your hard earned money. We've put together a free chat GPT training which we are updating with new videos every single day. You can access it, you watching this, by clicking the link down below. You just need to sign up, it's completely free. You'll then get access to a spreadsheet to a live Google Sheet where we will be updating with new videos each and every day. And the difference between what's inside of the free chat GPT training spreadsheet, which you'll be signing up to, is we're actually gonna go a little further with the training. So you're going to learn new use cases. You're going to look at how to monetize ChatGPT, actually how to make money with it. We're gonna show you how you can use ChatGPT to create products, create no-code apps or low-code apps, how you can create entire websites with ChatGPT, how you can monet, you know, all the different use cases and ways you can make money with it, creating info products. There, it's so cool what's possible with ChatGPT right now. And we want to make it all available for you. So please do sign up for the course and bookmark it. It's a spreadsheet. Please bookmark it so you can return to it every single day to see the new trainings that we are adding. Click that link down below. Make sure you do sign up for the best free chat GPT training on the internet right now and hopefully forever. It will be updated every single day so it's always fresh. Do sign up through that link. Otherwise, thank you so much um, and please do enjoy the free tutorial on chat GPT right now. Hello and welcome. You're now looking at a search engine and we're going to type in the search open AI and then the words chatbot. We're then going to click enter and we're going to start the search process. You're going to see a number of search results. The search result that you want to look for will say chat.openai.com. In some cases what you will need to do is you will need to click the notification button in order to get OpenAI to allow you to enter the system and you're going to need to write in your email address. We're then going to click Submit. You'll then be notified when ChatGPT is going to be ready to allow you to start your account. As of the recording of this video, once you get access, you will have an interface that looks like the one on your screen. On the left side menu, you will have previous conversations that you have with the OpenAI chatbot. You will also have access to an area that allows you to use the dark mode. You can switch back to light mode. You can also join the OpenAI Discord. And if you have an account with Discord, you can join the Discord with your existing account or start a new one. You can then access a notification page of any updates with ChatGPT. One of the articles that you'll see typically pinned to the top will be frequently asked questions. And it's a good idea to look at these frequently asked questions before you begin using chat GPT. And you're going to want to understand these things before you get started. You will typically see, and this will tell you what changes have been recently made with chat GPT. And again, as of the recording of this video, you will be able to determine the updates that chat GPT has made. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Another source of information about OpenAI Chatbot will be to visit the website itself. And what you're going to want to do is to go to the area in your search bar and then go to openai.com. You're then going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom, and you're going to see several aspects of the OpenAI company. And just as you would do an investigation on information about any other website or company, you're going to want to see what OpenAI says about itself. In particular, in the About Us section, as well as the OpenAI research. If you want to determine more that OpenAI says about itself, you want to visit the Publications section. 
The API in Open Chatbot allows you to integrate with the platform. You are going to want to pay attention to the pricing element. That means then that if you are willing to program an application, you can interact with the models within OpenAI to connect to the data. And you'll need to pay attention to the pricing as of the recording of this video. You'll see pricing for image interaction. You'll also see pricing for language interaction. Before using the API, you are going to want to read the terms and policies of OpenAI. When you click this link, you're going to notice that it says chat GDP, but it's not going to take you back to the chatbot. What this is going to do is to take you to a specific page telling you more about the chatbot. And this is where you want to read about what OpenAI chatbot actually does. And you're going to see examples as a recording of this video of what OpenAI chatbot can do. You're also going to learn how OpenAI chatbot works, how it improves itself, and how it actually uses machine learning, provide the information that it gives you when you do a query. You are going to want to pay specific attention to the limitations that the chatbot says about itself. And we're going to stop the video here and we're going to pick it up in the next video to discuss the limitations. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another Welcome back. Video. Now it's important to understand the limitations of ChatGPT, especially what the company says are its limitations. The most important element is going to be the very first limitation, and you're going to see this here as of the recording of this video. You'll notice that it says that ChatGPT writes plausible sounding but incorrect and nonsensical answers. And that for what ChatGPT does, this is not something that the model itself will be able to fix. And so you'll need to be aware of that when you use information that you get from the actual chatbot. In the second area, it says that in some cases you can restate a question and get different answers from the chatbot. So if you don't like the response you're getting, it's a good idea to restate the input that you're putting in in order to get the output from the chatbot. In the third bullet point it openly states that the open chatbot can use more words than it should and in some cases will overuse certain phrases. So this is something that you are going to want to be aware of. Another very important element to the information that you're getting back from the chatbot is the fact that ideally you would want the chatbot to ask you clarifying questions. However, what the model does is it assumes what you intended. So again, that's very important for you to understand when you're getting the information from the chatbot. And lastly, the chatbot will do what it can to refuse what it views to be inappropriate requests to the model. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. From the limitations page, there is a link that you can click on as a recording of this video that will take you to a documentation page. One of the things that you can do is you can go to this link that says examples. And even though this is designed to communicate with coders and people who are going to integrate the chatbot into a system that they are building, this page will give you clues on the kinds of things that you can ask ChatGPT to do. This list is categorized by certain elements. And in some cases, the elements are peculiar to ChatGPT, and so they won't necessarily translate into something that makes sense. However, it's a good idea to click each one of these and note the use case that is being described. For example, you'll see here that we can click Movie to Emoji. And then you'll see here that we can use this prompt. We can convert movie titles into an emoji. And so to test this system, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this prompt exactly as it is. And we are going to place the command inside of the dialog box. We're then going to click Shift Enter and Shift Enter again. And we're going to write in several additional commands so that the chatbot will know what we are looking for. Once we've written our information in, we're then going to click enter. And ChatGPT has given us the output as we have asked for it. So basically, you can use these examples as prompts for information that you can place in ChatGPT as is given to you here in this area. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. As of the recording of this video, OpenAI is testing a paid version of the ChatGPT model.
And so depending on where you read your business news, you will see that at some point there's going to be a wait list for this professional application. You are now looking at smartcompany.com. It is a blog that has news and information on the ChatGPT interface, and you will find that there is information about ChatGPT where you can click on a link and fill out a form to become part of the waitlist for the paid application. You will then be able to fill out this Google form in order to be considered for the trial. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You can ask ChatGPT to help in the content generation process. Specifically, you can ask ChatGPT to scrape the internet for specific ideas related to a topic. For example, assuming that your topic was how to market your business on Facebook, we can look for potential topic areas for a specific context. We can start the process by writing in a simple command and we're going to give the command and we're going to ask for a specific number of results in our command. We're going to click enter. What's going to happen then is ChatGPT is going to produce a list as we have asked it to do. Once we have our list within this area, we can go back and qualify this list. What we can then do is we can ask ChatGPT to rewrite the list and we are going to qualify it with an additional statement. We're now going to click enter and we're going to wait for the results. And ChatGPT will assist us in creating our list of ideas. We can then write a qualifying command. So once we've written our qualifying command, we can then click enter. And ChatGPT will help us to qualify our information. So we can write qualifying commands for the list that we get back and get more focused results. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another Welcome video. Back. We can use the information that we get from ChatGPT in order to create specific content for specific audiences. For example, we can take our qualified information and we can use it in order to create a specific outline that we can use in order to compose presentation content. For example, assuming that we were to give ChatGPT a specific command in order to give us an outline of some of the information that we have produced. And we would then give ChatGPT the commands that we want it to undertake. Once we have the content that has been generated by ChatGPT, we can then look for references. One of the things that we don't know is whether the information that we have is accurate. And so what we need to do is to be able to, so what we need to do is we need to be able to search to determine from reputable sources whether the information that we have is accurate. What we can then do is we can ask ChatGPT to give us reference information for our qualified list. And so we are going to request that ChatGPT give us a list of references and where we can find the references. We are then going to click enter. Again, because one of the weaknesses as stated by ChatGPT is that there may be inaccurate information in scraping from the web, we can ask ChatGPT to give us specific web-based references that we can go to to verify any of the information that we have. And so we can give ChatGPT a specific command for those references and where we can find the references outside of those in books that have been published. And so we are going to use our list and we are going to ask ChatGPT to give us a list of web-based references. We are going to add in a qualifying command in order to ask for the specific URLs where we can find these references. And so once we have written our command, we can then click enter. So basically what we have now done is we have now created a system of references for the information that we have asked ChatGPT in order to retrieve for us. We have also mitigated the weakness of ChatGPT in seeking out these references. In another video, 
we will undertake the process of citation for your idea and research process. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When you are in the midst of a research project and you are using ChatGPT, you can use the platform in order to increase accuracy and provide citation for the project that you are creating, specifically that project that you're using ChatGPT in order to generate. If you work within the same context as your project, what you can do is you can write in commands requesting specific kinds of citation. For example, we are going to write in a command for personal verification and citation. And so we are going to request specific information. We're going to add in a qualifying command and we're going to add in a stretch command. We're now going to click enter. And so you will notice we now have a list that we can use for citation. We can go one step further and we can request for specific information that we can use to verify our research. We can request information on specific courses that we can use in order to determine specific aspects of accuracy in what it is that we are producing. And so if we wanted to verify with a specific online course, we could do that and we can provide a command to chat GPT in order to do it. And finally, if we wanted to use something other than paid references, we can use free references available already on the internet. And so we can request for specific YouTube URLs to verify our information. And as you can see, ChatGPT remembers what it is that we are working with, provided that we remain within the same chat area. So we are now going to give ChatGPT a specific command. In this case, ChatGPT completed its results but did not provide us URLs for the last topic. So we're going to go back and we're going to request that ChatGPT give us the information for our last point in our topic. And we're then going to click enter. So you can verify information, provide accuracy and citation for any information that you choose to retrieve from ChatGTP. Now, this isn't a direct citation of the information that ChatGPT has given you. However, we are requesting <clears throat> a workaround for this citation. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, if you are not specifically knowledgeable about areas of HTML code, you can ask ChatGPT in order to help you to create instances of HTML code. And you can write your request in plain language and you can allow ChatGPT in order to give you an output that you can try. And to do that, all we need to do is to write in the command as we want to see it. We're now going to write in our command and we're now going to click enter. And we're going to allow ChatGPT in order to help us to create this specific command and we can use it on a specific page for us to use in our business. Now you want to make sure that you copy the response to a separate area. You also want to make sure that you keep the information in your chat history so that you can find it when you need it. In some cases, you may come back to the interface and you may find that in a period of high usage on chat GPT that you can't access this. And so you will want to make sure that it is copied to a place where you can access the information if you're not online or if chat GPT is at capacity. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, any business problem that we have that is internet-based, we can query ChatGTP to determine if there is a solution available that may be hidden from us in the search engines. To do that, we're going to go to a new conversation. We're then going to go to ChatGPT, and we're going to ask a plain language question of a business problem that we may be having for something specific to our online presence. Now, anytime that you start a new chat on the left side menu, you are basically starting a conversation. And so you can start with a question that will seem broad, and then you can come back and narrow down your question based on the results that ChatGPT gives you. So what we're now going to do is click enter. So what you have is you have an initial set of information. You can now come back and you can ask a qualifying question in order to continue the conversation and solve your business problem. And again, when you are typing in commands, even though you're typing in plain language, 
understand that you are typing into a machine. You are also typing in a machine that is scraping the internet for answers for your question. We are now going to click enter. Now obviously we can type in all of the qualifiers into one question area. What we're demonstrating now is the nature of a conversation. What we now have is specific information. We can now type in a follow-up question based on that information. And we're now going to click enter. Now you'll notice then that ChatGPT has given you information and this information that it has given you, even though it does not provide the direct answer that you've asked, is actually accurate. If you wanted to look for the actual answers to the question that we have queried it with. And we can type in a follow-up question about the information. As you can see here, we've typed in a follow-up question and we've been given an answer. So you can use ChatGPT in order to solve specific business problems by using one screen at a time and by asking follow-up questions. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Back. Now, because basically ChatGPT scrapes the internet for information that it gives you when it provides answers in plain language, you can save time in the research, verification, and citation process. If we were to use the same topic as we were in one specific conversation, we can then look for independent verification of our topic area. We can then use a query and we can search for statistical verification of any information that we can find. So what we're going to do now is we're going to type in a statistical request query and we're going to press enter. And chat GPT does give us the information that we were requesting. One of the things you'll notice is that in its answer, likely due to the load on the server in the free version, the query did not complete as you can see here in point number five. That meant then that we could go back and we can ask ChatGPT in order to complete what it is that it had typed. And we use a plain language request in order to do it. We then got the plain language answer in the completion of that point. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. One of the things that ChatGPT will do for you is to create new context for content that you already have or for ideas that you already have. For example, if we were to take an existing document and we were to take all of the text and to place it inside of ChatGPT, what we're going to do is to give ChatGPT context and to tell the chatbot to write it in the context that we specify. Once we have the context, we're going to click Shift Enter and we are then going to paste in our article. We're then going to click Enter. And we're going to allow ChatGPT to rewrite the article. Now, it's a good idea to take your content that you have created and to move it through other applications. One paid application we can run our content through is Copyscape. Now, Copyscape does have a charge associated with it. However, the charge is minimal and you can do what's called a premium search so that Copyscape can check your content against other content on the internet. We're now going to click premium search and our content has now passed the Copyscape test. We can also run the same content through another system. We can place the same content inside of the Grammarly plagiarism checker and we can then scan our new content for plagiarism. According to Grammarly, no plagiarism is found. If you have an account with Grammarly, you can fix other issues according to Grammarly when it comes to the writing. However, we can run the same content through another tool that's commonly available to individuals to use the Microsoft suite of products. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. If you are a user of Microsoft Word and you use it for writing, you may be familiar with the spelling and grammar tool and the thesaurus tool. And these have been traditionally available to users of Microsoft Word and Microsoft Office. As of the recording of this video, there is a new tool available using AI and it's called the Microsoft Editor. And you're going to see it here in this area inside of the review menu. It's also available on the home menu. And what you're going to do is to activate the editor mode. What will happen is that the editor will then analyze your document and it will determine if you have elements that need to be corrected and we'll tell you what those elements are. 
What you can also do is you can determine a different voice for your content. What has been specified already is that the content has been formal, and so formal is the appropriate element to be selected here. What you can then do is to clarify any issues that the editor has raised. And you're going to see an element here that the AI has decided that needs to be fixed. And you'll notice that the editor has determined that the article is appropriate for formal writing. So one thing that you'll want to do is to move your content through the Microsoft Word editor to determine if there are elements that you can fix. Now, if you don't use Microsoft, you can typically get a browser extension of a Grammarly grammar checker that you can add to either Microsoft Edge or use it along with Google Docs if you use their browser. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. One of the things you can do with ChatGPT is that you can take content that may be difficult to understand and to place it inside of ChatGPT in order to ask the chatbot to help you by making the language simpler to understand. And this can especially be the case when you are working with scientific and or academic studies. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to copy this information. We're going to place it inside of the chatbot and we're going to ask the chatbot to help us to understand it by taking this information and placing it in more plain language. Now, one alternative in our example information is we could use the phrase, make this understandable to a five-year-old. However, we're not going to use that particular phrase. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the abstract from the academic study. What we're now going to do is we're going to hit enter. And ChatGPT will give us a simplified explanation of this information. And what you'll notice is a shorter, simplified explanation. And so one thing that ChatGPT can do for us is to simplify information that may be difficult to understand. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. One of the ways to work with ChatGPT is to first ask the chatbot if it is familiar with specific context, content, or frameworks before you begin a line of inquiry. For example, we can write in a specific framework so that we can ask in plain language ChatGPT if it is familiar with that framework. So you can write in the framework that you want to ask ChatGPT about and you can then click enter. And ChatGPT will then tell you whether it is familiar with the framework or the content that you are looking for. In some cases, if we restate our question, we will be able to get a fuller explanation of the framework that we're looking to work with. Once you understand that ChatGPT understands the framework or the content that you are looking for, you can then begin to use that content or that context for future queries. We will practice this concept in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back. We can then use that knowledge that we know that ChatGPT understands a specific framework on previous queries that we have done. So we will then give ChatGPT a query and we will ask it to use previous information in order to use a framework that we have verified in order to undertake an online marketing activity. We're going to include some additional qualifying information and we are then going to click enter. And we are going to allow ChatGPT to do what we have asked it to do. So basically what we have now done is we have asked ChatGPT to write a sales letter in a specific context. And we can add on to this element. We can give ChatGPT more instructions for this project. So we can give ChatGPT an additional query and we can then click enter and ChatGPT will give us what we have asked for. And we will see it in context in the form that we have written it. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Once we have a specific document that we have run through, a specific framework, and we've made sure it's unique, what we can do is we can add further context to our query. Now, this applies outside of this particular application. What we are looking at is the construction of a sales letter. But we can take this concept and we can use it in anything that we are creating inside of ChatGPT. 
what we are now going to do is we are going to recontextualize our query into more specifics. So basically, we are going to narrow down the focus of the query that we want ChatGPT to give us information about. And we can do this in any context that we want. We are now going to click Enter. And we're going to wait for ChatGPT to give us the output. Now, the chatbot will attempt to put the information in the context that you require it. It does understand specific queries, even though it will not necessarily match up that query perfectly. We're going to give ChatGPT another query. Now, again, when we input a query like this one, we are writing to a machine. And what it will do is it will use its network to try to determine how to output the information in the query that we have asked. We are now going to click Enter. So basically, what you'll see is that you are continuing a conversation with the chatbot and you are continuing in the same information that you have been building since the beginning. And so the chatbot does recognize all of the other information in previous posts. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. We can ask ChatGPT to suggest to us a specific process to solve a problem. We can do that in any context. In this video, we're going to focus on a business-related problem. However, you can use ChatGPT to suggest a process for any problem that there is a solution being made available on the internet. What ChatGPT will do is to simplify the solution and put it in plain language instead of asking you to look through all of the individual websites. For example, if we were to look at the query, how to market a self-published book, and we were to go to our favorite search engine as of the recording of this video, we would be able to find a solution. However, it would not be in plain language and we would have to look through the actual websites. You're going to see various improvements being made by search engines. However, you will need to look through the information. The benefit of looking at a search engine is that you'll be able to determine the most reputable sources and the cited information. However, we can look for that same information using ChatGPT to suggest to us a process. Once we write in, we can then click Enter. And you will then have a process written in plain language. Again, in order to work around the fact that ChatGPT does not cite, we can ask for citations even though those citations will not be specific to the information that ChatGPT actually gave you. And so to complete the task, we can then ask for ChatGPT to give us specific references. And we can now click Enter. And so basically, you can solve a process and ask for ChatGPT to give you specific references to verify the information that it gave you. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. You can do compare and contrast with information that you get from ChatGPT. For example, if we were to look at this particular set of information that we have queried, we can look at an alternative framework. One of the things you'll notice is that when we write in context with a previous framework, the chatbot will give us additional context to what we have asked. And we can continue with the process. You're going to notice that there is a lot of similarity between the queries that we have returned. And one of the things that you may recall from a previous video is that in some cases, ChatGPT will make a leap in the information that it provides. And so you will need to make sure that you are finding references to verify the information that you are determining. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to combine the four contexts into one context. And we are going to click Enter. And as has been demonstrated in previous videos, we can then ask for specific references. And again, ChatGPT does remember the context in this particular chat area. We are now going to click Enter. And so basically, what we have done is we have determined a framework and we have determined references for each part of the framework that we are going to be working with. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another conclusion. Video. Using the examples as a guide as to what you can place inside of ChatGPT, you will be able to create scenarios that go beyond the use of a search engine. You'll also want to pay attention 
to the direction of the chatbot, specifically the research that's being done on the API as well as the chatbot interface. And although you'll see many experts speak to where they think OpenAI is going, you can get a sense for the direction by reading the blog and the research that OpenAI is doing. And in terms of AI in general, there are a number of books available that speak to the broader context of AI and what you can expect from the industry as a whole. And although it doesn't have to be the first priority, if you intend to rely on ChatGPT in the long run, you will want to keep track of the view of the platform from the investment world. This can signal the direction of the company and can give insight on how and when the platform will become a paid application and its overall direction. And of course, you can ask ChatGPT what the best references are about itself. In some cases, ChatGPT will tell you about books. In other cases, ChatGPT will tell you about research papers that you can read to determine where the platform should be going. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.